Okay, so good afternoon once again. So for today, uh, we'll have another topic, equally important topic, and that is about immunization and vaccines. So you might be wondering, why did we jump immediately to chapter 25? Uh, it's because immunization and vaccine is an application of immune response. We have already discussed antigen. We have already discussed antibodies. And it is about time that we discuss one of the most important application of immune response, and that is through immunizations and vaccines. So for today, uh, this is the type or this, this is the outline of our discussion. So we will be talking about the types of immunity. Although I have introduced this one in chapter in chapter three, and then active immunization, passive immunization, and adaptive immunity. So immunity, therefore, is defined as the condition of being resistant to disease. And we want the word resistant mean to say uh, we will not get the infection or the disease. And in order for us to achieve it artificially, so we need to have immunization. So when you say immunization, it is an artificial process by which immunity is acquired. Okay, so it's an artificial process. It's not a natural process. So immunity is acquired through is acquired and there are actually three types of immunization active immunization we also have the passive immunization and then we also have the adaptive immunization so let's talk about first the active immunization why do we call it active okay the reason why we call it active because we have okay we have um active participation in the production of antibodies. And why do we say that we have an active participation in the production of antibodies? Because we participate in the production of mounting an immune response to the antigen. Okay, stimulation of person's own immune system to mount an adaptive immune response to an antigen. So there are two types of active immunity. It could be naturally acquired or artificially acquired. So this one is naturally acquired. And we can only get naturally acquired if we have been exposed and take note huh, and recovered. Exposed and recovered from infection. So that is naturally acquired. So for example, we have been infected with group A streptococcus and eventually we produce antibodies against group A streptococcus. Um, it is not true always because even if you have been infected with COVID-19, there's still a chance that you can also be reinfected with COVID-19. Why? Because there are many variants of COVID-19 virus or the SARS-CoV-2. But but if, for example, you are recently, you have recently been uh, recovered from COVID-19, so most probably it will take a while before you get another infection. Okay, so that is a natural exposure to infection. That is an example of naturally acquired immunity. And second is the administration of vaccine. So the administration of vaccine is an example of artificially acquired active immunity. Okay, so here there is a development of immunity and an example of that is, for example, our new, yung mga infants, we immunize them against measles. Okay, so it means that if they receive measles vaccine, we expect that they will be protected against the measles virus. Let's say, for example, for those of you who have received um, the COVID-19 job, so that is an example of artificially acquired active immunity. Why do you think it is active? Because when you administer vaccine, you are administering 
antigen. And this will stimulate your immune system to produce an antibody. So that is the adaptive immune response to an antigen. The adaptive immune response to the antigen is the production of antibodies. Okay. Passive immunization is the transfer of antibodies from immunized host to a non-immune individual. So passive immunization means that there is no active participation. There's no active participation in the production of antibodies. Okay, so since there's no active participation of the in the production of antibodies, it means that antibodies were just given to you. Okay, so there are actually two types, no? So the first type is called naturally acquired passive immunity. So in naturally acquired passive immunity, Maternal antibodies were transferred to fetus or infant. IgG through placenta, because it is the only one that can pass through the placenta. And the secretory IgA through breast milk. Okay, so these are examples of naturally acquired passive immunity. And passive immunotherapy is an example of artificially acquired passive immunity okay so it means that there is a commercial antibody preparation meaning to say antibodies were just given to you so for example um to give for example um a person with severe covid19 can receive a convalescent plasma because convalescent plasma are expected to have antibodies against the virus or or another example the one that is written here is use of full human antibodies for a person with an immunodeficiency disease so what's the difference okay in passive immunotherapy antibodies were given but in artificially acquired active immunity antigen is given in the form of vaccine okay so that's the difference between passive and active. But there's a third type called adaptive immunization. So adaptive immunization is the transfer of cells of the immune system, usually they are in the form of lymphocytes, from an immunized host to non-immunized individual. So there is some sort of a transfusion. Okay? So, adaptive immunotherapy of hematopoietic stem cells into a leukemia patients who receive high-dose irrigation or chemotherapy. So, this is an example of a bone marrow transplant. Okay, so that is an example also of adaptive immunization. Okay, so these are the three types of immunization. Is it natural or acquired? Of course, is it natural or artificial? Of course, it is artificial. Okay, let's talk about the advantages and limitation. Active immunity can induce long-term protection because of the fact that there is an amnestic response meaning to say our memory cells play a very important role to this one however it takes time to develop because there is a lag phase and then sometimes you will be needing repeated exposures this explains the reason why we have first dose, second dose, and even booster dose. Okay. 
passive immunity provides immediate protection. Okay? However, it is temporary because memory is not produced. Meaning to say, there is no an amnestic response. Memory cells did not participate. And another thing is that since they are produced from animals, so the possibility of hypersensitivity reaction is very high. Okay. So adaptive immunity can transfer cell mediated immunity. Okay. Patient's own immune system cells must be depleted. So ang requirement is that you have to be immunodeficient. You have to be immunodeficient to qualify for adaptive immunity. But again, because it is a transplant, okay, it is a form of transplant. Meaning to say, there is a possibility of rejection. So there is a possibility of rejection of allogenic cells. Again, what do you mean by allogenic cells? Allogenic cells means um, same species, different individuals. Okay, so there's a possibility of rejection of allogenic cells. Okay, so that's the limitation. So active immunity, therefore, is prophylactic. Ah, sorry, Tama. it's prophylactic. Passive immunity is prophylactic and therapeutic. Adaptive immunity is more of therapeutic. Okay, so these are the advantages and limitations of the different types of immunity. So let's talk about vaccine. Administration of vaccine can induce artificial, artificially acquired active immunity. So vaccine is made up of antigen. Okay. Suspension derived from a pathogen. And it is a form of immunoprophylaxis or prevention of disease through immunization of healthy individuals. So the vaccine is administered. Okay, so the vaccine is administered. And this vaccine, and um, this vaccine are actually inactive or attenuated. Attenuated form. Okay. History. Do you know that in ancient China, variolation is performed to protect against smallpox so it's it's dangerous because people they are uh, they ask people to inhale products from the smallpox to have immunity so some of them get the disease while inhaling it so it's really not that effective until edward jenner discovered cross reactivity from cowpox lesion to vaccinate against smallpox so edward jenner became the father of immunology so um, this is a very interesting story, so I will post an animation regarding how Edward Jenner discovered vaccination. So the term vaccine actually came from vaca because the first materials for vaccine actually came from the, the vaccinia virus from cows. Okay, so that's the reason why we call it vaccine. In 1880, Louis Pasteur used attenuated organisms to develop vaccine against chicken, cholera, anthrax, and rabies. So the term attenuation utilizes bacteria and viruses. Why? Because these are what? These are antigens. However, these antigens are weakened. Okay? How do we make the antigen weak? 
So there are several processes of attenuation, like say, for example, chemical treatment, that's one. Okay, growth at different temperatures is another process of attenuation. And the third process is repeated in vitro passage in cell cultures. If you keep on doing it, okay, the bacteria or viruses would become much weaker. Okay, so that is the process of attenuation. So the 20th century is considered to be as the golden age of vaccine development because we have now new methods of attenuating the organisms such as the TB, typhoid, and fever. We also develop toxoids. Toxoids are attenuated or inactivated bacterial toxin, usually for toxigenic bacteria. And usually we are using it for diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus. So this is one of a best example of toxoids. So we also produce attenuated viral vaccines, such as polio, ito yung sabin, measles, mumps, rubella, and varicella. And we also, during the 20th century, there has been a production of glycoconjugates. Uh, glycoconjugates are bacterial polysaccharides linked to a protein. And this makes an effective antigen. So if you have bacterial polysaccharides that is linked to a protein, this becomes a very effective antigen. And the first recombinant genetically engineered vaccine was also produced during the 20th century, particularly against the hepatitis C. Hey, okay, so that is the 20th century. Now the now we are in the 21st century. Okay. More live attenuated vaccines were developed during the 20th century against influenza, rotavirus, and even herpes zoster. And Multivalent glycoconjugates were produced, yung pneumococcal vaccine, meningococcal vaccines. These are examples of glycoconjugates. And there has, there has also been a production of recombinant vaccine to prevent cervical cancer because there are several strains of human papilloma virus that can cause cancer of the cervix, such as the HPV type 16 and type 18. So now you can actually buy nine in one HPV vaccine. So new technologies were also developed to produce the new generation vaccines. So new generation vaccine is like, for example, the mRNA vaccine being used by Pfizer and Moderna is the mRNA vaccine. Or they are even using um, inactivated viral vector such as AstraZeneca. Do you know that AstraZeneca to develop um, COVID-19 vaccine utilizes adenovirus as a viral vector? See, so the, we now have new technologies to develop the next generation vaccines that we are using nowadays in response to pandemic such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so antigen preparation used in conventional vaccine. So yung conventional or sino una. Okay, so we are using the entire organisms. The whole organisms could either be attenuated, meaning to say they are weakened, or inactivated, meaning to say they are dead. Do you know that Sinovac the vaccine that we're using for COVID-19 is actually an example of inactivated whole virus. So ang ginawa ng mga researcher, they get samples from patients with severe COVID in China and then they culture the virus in BGMK, Buffalo, uh, let me check the data again. I do not I do not want to 
Basta inak inak makikid mo sign of back preparations. Okay, so they actually um they actually um use uh, mon uh, monkey kidney okay so anyway from the cell lines they inactivate the virus and they add adjuvant and now we have Sinovac. See? So from from the person of from the lung of a person who has who has um ah vero cells, you know, naalala ko na vero cells. That is the name of the cell lines that they that they use for for in uh, for cultivation of the COVID nineteen virus or SARS-CoV-2 virus. So they place the virus they collected from the ICU, place it in vero cells, inactivate it with a chemical plus adjuvant, the Hauga Sinovac, and that's majority of the Filipinos receive. Okay? So they say that it is not as efficient as Pfizer and other types of vaccine, but nonetheless, it is actually 99% effective in preventing death. You can still be infected, but at least you'll not die uh, or you'll not get severe COVID if you have a sign of that. Okay. Same with Pfizer or even AstraZeneca. You can still get infected, but you prevent death or severe COVID. So that is an example of inactivated vaccine. Okay. So some vaccines could be subunit vaccines such as toxoid or the polysaccharides or purified recombinant proteins so so mrna is a subunit vaccine so mrna because you only give the mrna of the virus so pfizer and moderna mrna vaccine these are examples of subunit vaccines so attenuated vaccines use live but weakened viruses or bacteria so, example is the Sabin vaccine. It is an oral trivalent polio vaccine. So, organisms are grown under abnormal culture conditions so that they are no longer pathogenic. They're still alive, but they are weak. Even if they are weak, they are still capable of eliciting an immune response. So that's the basic principle of attenuated vaccine. So examples of attenuated vaccines are the BCG. So that's the reason why they are they're still alive. So you need to keep them at uh you need to keep them at a temperature, a certain temperature, so that they will not get uh they will not be inactivated. So the BCG is Mycobacterium bovis, um, the Bacillus calmitgerin came from Mycobacterium bovis, and they are adapted to grow at high concentration of bile. So this will prevent tuberculosis in humans. So there are also vaccines against typhoid fever. Sabine, the oral trivalent polio vaccine is being is being given orally to to have uh, to stimulate to stimulate mucosal immunity. And the influenza or the nasal mist vaccine um, will prevent type A and type B strains of influenza. For viruses, we also have the rubella, which prevents measles, rubella, German measles, mumps, and even varicella, or the one that can prevent chicken pox and shingles. So these are all examples of live attenuated vaccine. So advantage is they can stimulate both the humoral and cell-mediated immunity. However, since they are alive, 
you cannot administer them to immunocompromised patients. And they can potentially interfere with maternal antibodies. Therefore, it requires careful handling and storage. In rare occasion, reversion is possible. So when we say reversion from being weak, the organisms can become virulent, so that's dangerous. And if it becomes virulent, then they can cause disease. So imagine, no, you give a person in a, a live attenuated polio virus, instead of him being protected from polio, that person, uh, the vaccination results in the, in, in the development of polio. So that's reversion. But it happens one in a million cases. But what if you are that one out of the million? Okay. Now, inactivated vaccines um, utilizes intact viruses or bacteria that have been killed by treatment with chemical or heat. So self-vaccine, also against polio, is an example of inactivated vaccines. And influenza, the one that not that not the nasal mist, the one that is being given intermascular or interdermal. So these are examples of inactivated vaccines, as well as hepatitis A. So the advantage is that it can be safely given to immunocompromised individuals. It can stimulate humoral immunity, but a lesser cell mediated immunity, and it may require two or more booster doses to have protective immunity. So Sinovac is an example of inactivated vaccines. So subunit vaccines is actually one, is made up of one or more purified components of a pathogen. So let's say, for example, this is a virus. session as a drawing. If you give the entire virus in the form of vaccine, that's such a sign of vac, that is an example of inactivated vaccine. But if you only choose a certain component of the virus, say for example, you choose only the mRNA, that is an example of subunit vaccine. So you do not give the entire thing, but you just give the essential part of the virus to produce antibodies. Okay, so that's an example of a subunit vaccine. So let's discuss what are the types of COVID-19 vaccines. Well, unfortunately, um, I actually got this material from JAMA. John Hopkins University, John, John Hopkins Hospital. And in the United States, they do not recognize, they do not recognize Sinovac. They only recognize three vaccines. They didn't even recognize AstraZeneca. So they just recognize Pfizer, Moderna, and Janssen. So it's, according to them, there are three types of COVID-19 vaccine, no? The mRNA, the protein subunit, and the vector. So wala rito yung Sinovac because Sinovac is 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 categorized as inactivated vaccine. All of these three vaccines type either deliver or cause our bodies to make harmless proteins like one found on the surface of COVID-19 virus. So for example, if you are given mRNA, this will allow you to produce proteins. Your body will be producing proteins okay, found in the surface of the virus. And these proteins, since you have the proteins, then your bodies will produce antibodies against that particular proteins. So if you already have the antibodies against that particular proteins, when the real virus enter, you are ready because your immune system has been trained. So that's the purpose of giving mRNA. So that you will produce, your body itself, will produce viral proteins, and then these viral proteins will be detected by your immune system, and your immune system will produce antibodies against that viral proteins. That's how specific it is. Why, why viral proteins? Because proteins are of the virus, 
are the ones that will infect our cell, yung viral proteins na yan. Okay. So, the vaccine teaches our immune system to recognize the virus after we are vaccinated. If you are exposed to the virus, our immune system recognizes, attacks, and blocks the virus. So, there are three main types of vaccine, no? So, sabi ko nga sa inyo, wala rito yung ano, wala rito yung um, Sinovac. So, we have the mRNA, a molecule that tells our bodies to make proteins. This is what I've been explaining to you. mRNA in the COVID-19 vaccine tells our cells to make harmless protein, just like the one found in the virus. Pfizer and Moderna works this way. mRNA sila. The protein subunit, um, such as the Novavax vaccine, contains harmless pieces of proteins unique to COVID-19 virus. So that's Novavax. And then the vector vaccines like the J&J, AstraZeneca is also a vector vaccine. Use another virus that has been made safe to deliver materials that tells our cells to make harmless proteins unique to the COVID-19 virus. So yung mRNA, yung example natin is yung ano, Pfizer and Moderna, yung protein is Novavax, Vector, JNJ, then yung AstraZeneca. Mayroon pang fourth, kaso hindi talaga nire-recognize ng US yung China, eh, no? Political, I'm not sure. Yung fourth is yung ano, inactivated. Inactivated whole virus. Ito yung Sinovac. Okay. So, ah, yung ang AstraZeneca are Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca are given in two shots in the upper arm muscles, three or four weeks apart. Yung Johnson & Johnson is given one shot in the upper arm muscles. So typically, it takes about two to four weeks after the second shot for the immune system's protection to full response to vaccination. So hindi agad, pagkagali nyo sa bakuna area, you are protected. You have to wait for about two to four weeks para meron na kayo IgG. Even after vaccination, you might be able to pick up the virus, carry it, and give it to others. So, infection prevention measures in public among unvaccinated people are still very important. So, the number of times vaccines made by other companies are given and the way they are given vary. So, a third dose is now available for immunocompromised individuals. So, ngayon, not just for immunocompromised individuals, but for all. Okay, so if you haven't received your booster, try to get one now. So our vaccine safe. So although Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson, and Johnson were developed in a faster than usual process, kasi nagmamadali na tayo, they were extensively tested for both safety and efficacy. So all three vaccines have met the FDA safety standards and will be carefully monitored to detect any problems or side effects. So, for example, I myself, I've received Sinovac, I have received Pfizer, so I'm still okay, fortunately. So, based on clinical trials, Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson Johnson, the lang kasi yung accept sa US, are extremely effective in preventing infection from the virus and from preventing serious disease, hospitalization, and death. So, the trials so far show that vaccines are equally effective across age, gender, race, and ethnicity subgroups. So the clinical trials were conducted. Ito kasi yung problem ng Sinovac. Kaya hindi sila na-recognize sa US. So very limited yung clinical trials nila. So usually sa Latin America sila nag-clinical trials sa Chile. Pero ang, ang Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson, mas marami silang groups na sinali. So tingnan nyo, very diverse. Asian, Black, Hispanic, Latino, and Native American descent. So, mas madaming ano, mas marami silang sinali as compared sa Sinovac. So, important facts about vaccine, you will not get COVID-19 from the vaccine. That's true. Okay? So, maraming natatapot. Fact number two, the vaccine will not change or damage your genetic information. Come on, nung bata pa kayo nakakareceive na kayo ng vaccine, ngayon pa ba kayo matatapot? Number three, even if you are vaccinated, you should still wear your mask. 
frequently wash our hands and maintain physical distance to help keep safe to help keep everyone safe. Number four, the three vaccines that na we they're all equally important in stopping the spread of COVID-19. Fact number five, if you are pregnant, trying to become pregnant now or want to get pregnant in the future, it is still safe for you to get the vaccine. Okay, so these are the key features. So again, ayan, ito na nga yung types of vaccine. No? Yung Pfizer is mRNA in lipid nanoparticles. The same thing with Moderna. Janssen is non-replicating adenovirus vector. Yung AstraZeneca is also a non-replicating adenovirus vector, while yung Sinovac is inactivated virus. Dosage, two doses for all except for Janssen. But nowadays, we are now requiring booster. So antibody detection, antibody detection, usually 14 days after the second dose, except for Pfizer. Kasi in Pfizer, pinakamabilis man na after 7 days, meron ka ng antibody. AstraZeneca, no data. Yan, kaya tuloy hindi na approve. Wala kasing data. Okay. All vaccines are highly effective in co preventing COVID-19-related hospitalization and death. Age group, 18 years old and above. Pero ito ngayon, pwede na sa senior yung AstraZeneca kasi luma na tayo. Kayo ba nakaramdam ng chills, fevers, headache, tiredness, muscle aches, injection, side pain? Kasi these are the potential side effects. Okay? So, all of these vaccines are available in the Philippines. Lalong-lalo na syempre ang gustong-gusto ng tatay natin, yung Sinovac. Okay. Um, excuse me for a while. Let's talk about toxoids. So toxoids are chemically inactivated bacterial toxins, but they are not pathogenic. So they retain the ability to stimulate an immune response, katulad nga ng DPT. Okay? And then polysaccharides are biochemically purified polysaccharides from bacterial capsules. And so, for example, ano ba yung mga encapsulated bacteria? These are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, and Neisseria meningitis. So, do you know that pneumococcal vaccine is very important, uh, particularly 13 and the 23 serotypes of the pneumococcal vaccine? For Haemophilus influenza, it is the HIV, the type B capsule, the one that is most virulent. And for Neisseria meningitis, ito yung meningococcal vaccine. So they are very expensive vaccines, I tell you. Pag meron na kayong anak. <laughs> okay. So it requires conjugation to a carrier protein to induce IgG production and long-term immunity. Okay. So we also have the purified proteins because they are biochemically purified components of the microorganisms. So for example, is the pertussis or the whooping cough vaccine. But because this one contains two to five purified proteins from Bordetella pertussis, including the pertussis toxoids. And then recombinant proteins, the reason why they are called recombinants because they are gen genetically modified. No? So proteins are produced by genetically modified non-pathogenic bacteria, yeast, or other cells. 
so they can we can actually genetically engineer these organisms to produce proteins so for example the hepatitis b surface antigen and the human papilloma virus l1 protein from high risk hpv types so it cannot be used to produce antigens other than proteins because highly controlled the environment whenever we're trying to produce this particular recombinant proteins so what are the advantages of subunit vaccine? Nakita niyo naman yung Pfizer. It only uses mRNA. Di ba? So, unlike yung Sinovac, intact organism yung ibibigay mo sa tao, pero yung Pfizer, you only use the one that is needed. Yung, ano, yung, um, yung Janssen, they only use, uh, ito, yung Novavax, Novavax, Hindi nakarating sa Pilipinas yung Novavax eh. Novavax will only use a certain type of protein. Okay, yung, yung Pfizer and Moderna will only use mRNA. So, indeed, talagang subunit talaga sila. So, they can induce an immune response to the pathogenic component of the organism. Safe and we avoid administration of intact organisms. Kasi pag sinabing intact organism should give the entire virus, katulad ng ginagawa ng Sinovac. Okay. So, however, there are limitations. Okay. So, subunit vaccines would require two or more booster doses to, pro to produce protective immunity. Requires an adjuvant to increase immunogenicity and it must be multivalent if a broad immune response is desired. Ito mahalaga po, lalong-lalo na in COVID-19 because there are several variants being produced by the virus. So factors influencing immunogenicity, we have already discussed this in chapter two, but to recall, um, age, we give vaccine to the youngest individuals at risk for the disease for as long as it is safe and effective for that age group. So take for example, the first time that Pfizer was commercialized, they do not advocate for people who are below 18. Then eventually, they say that people 12 years old and above can now receive vaccine. Just recently, they now released a statement that people or children age 5 and above can now receive Pfizer because they need to have data in studying them. Okay, so prayerfully, we can now have vaccine. We can now have vaccine even for our toddlers okay, against COVID-19. Immune status, the degree of host immunocompetence can be influenced by many factors such as the age and the health of the host. And then, of course, the vaccine composition. They say that live attenuated vaccines tend to be most immunogenic. Subunit vaccines tend to be least immunogenic. Okay, adjuvants. So that's it. Kaya nga, sabi rito, Subunit vaccines tend to be least immunogenic. Kaya nga, yung mga Pfizer and other types of subunit vaccines, they would really need an adjuvant. Because adjuvant or something says that enhance the immune response when administered together with a vaccine antigen. So adjuvant will stimulate the innate immune system to induce the release of cytokines that activates the adaptive immunity. Also, adjuvants plays a very important role in the antigen delivery system. Meaning to say, if there is an adjuvant, that particular antigen can easily be presented and uptake by, there is an easy uptake or enhanced uptake by the antigen presenting cells. So adjuvants, therefore, can be considered as immuno potentiators because it can activate antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cells to present antigen to the t-cells so immune response become more enhanced if you will be adding adjuvants so what are examples of adjuvants so it could be alu this is the most common and oil in water emulsion such as the Freud's prunes complete and incomplete adjuvant so if you have added adjuvants together with the vaccine, it will result in faster, longer-lasting immune response 
and increase the antibody titer. So again, when we say increase in antibody titer, it means that we increase in antibody concentration. It may also increase the cell-mediated immunity and reduce the dose of antigen and number of inoculations needed. Okay, nowadays we are actually uh, we are actually vying for the next generation vaccines. So we have seen we have seen this in the form of Pfizer and Moderna because they identify potent vaccine antigens by molecular methods. So that's why they were able to get the correct sequence of viral mRNA. Without molecular biology, they will not be able to get the correct viral mRNA sequence. So also, there is another type known as the reverse vaccinology. Here, there is the screen, screening the entire genome of pathogen to identify genes that are good for vaccine antigens and try to induce broadly neutralizing antibodies. Okay. Because of molecular biology, we now have a very effective vaccine, such as the ones being used by Moderna and Pfizer. So in the next generation vaccine, we discover new adjuvants and try the routes, different routes of vaccine delivery. So diba, some of them are using adenovirus for COVID-19, such as yung AstraZeneca and AstraZeneca and, and Janssen. They're using adenovirus. Okay? Some of them would use bacteriophage. That's actually uh, some sometime in the future. They might use actually bacteriophage. And there are also new methods to assess immunity. So what are the benefits of the vaccine? Vaccines can be considered as one of the greatest medical achievements of the 20th century. Because of the vaccine, we reduce or eliminate many serious potentially fatal diseases, such as smallpox. Hopefully, we'll be able to eliminate COVID-19, but I'm not sure about it. Because they say after, uh, after, um, uh, after Omicron, after Omicron, not Omni, after Omicron, uh, from pandemic, it becomes endemic. What does it mean when I say endemic? It means that it is constantly constantly present in the population. So humans will be able to adapt to live with the virus. That's, that's what we meant by um, uh, endemicity. So the one that we want to achieve here is herd immunity. So you've been reading about herd immunity. So it is a protection extended to a nearby person who have not been immunized. So for example, your color blue is the not immunized but healthy individuals yung green is immunized at yung red ito yung not immunized sick and contagious this is our scenario in 2020 when vaccines are not yet when vaccines are not yet um developed for covid-19 so in the population when two get infected gets infected because of the presence of non-immunized individuals, majority gets in the infection. This is now our scenario in 2021. Majority or a, a significant percentage of us are already immunized. So when there's actually two persons who are not yet uh, immunized and they are sick and contagious, then it can still result to can still result to infection. So this is our scenario, 2021, 2022, we're still here. What we want to achieve is this, the herd immunity. Majority of the people are immunized and even if two or three die, or not really die, but two or three gets infected, majority are still immunized and will not be that contagious at all. Not really at all, but at least we, we minimize the spread. This is what we want. This is what we want to achieve. Kaso may mga anti-vaxxer talaga, wala tayong magagawa doon. Or may mga tao talaga na umiinom na lang ng, ng ivermectin. <laughs> okay, shout out sa inyo. But then again, it's quite difficult to achieve herd immunity if we do not immunize everybody. And you cannot 
cannot undergo face-to-face -face classes. Okay, adverse effects of some vaccines. Local reactions is ab about there would be swelling and tenderness at injection site. And then generalized reaction means that you'll develop low-grade fever, malay, even weakness and severe reactions are rare. Allergic reactions, you might develop either type 1, this is the immediate type, hypersensitivity reaction, and type 3, this is the immune complex. Development of disease, disease. this happens during reversion when you are administered with live attenuated vaccine. Okay, let's talk about passive immunity. So passive immunity is the transfer of preformed antibodies to an unimmunized host. You can get it naturally or through therapeutic agents. So I think I discussed this already. When you say natural transfer, you get it from your mother, either through placenta or breast milk. But here in passive natural uh, artificial immunity, you can get a standard human immune serum globulin. So this is also known as the gamma globulin. So it is made from full serum from thousands of donors, contains antibodies to numerous antigens, and it has a prophylactic treatment particularly for patients with deficiency in antibody production. So aside from that, um, convalescent plasma from COVID-19 patients, from COVID-19 recovered patients, yeah? so they can also be in the form of passive immunity. Also, there are specific serum immune globulins made from pulled serum of donors with immunity to a particular pathogen. So that's why if you are infected with HEPA B, you do not have you do not get HEPA B vaccine, but you get human serum globulins or gamma globulins. So not only for HEPA B, but also for HEPA A, varicella, rabies, tetanus, respiratory syncytial virus. But this one is very common, no? So when you are beaten by a dog who suspected to be rabid or not, still have you still need to get human serum globulins. So it is used to treat an immunized individuals who have potentially been exposed to a pathogen. But yung cerebis, uh, cerebis, that is very common. But for example, aside from that, you can also get animal globulins, and we usually get it from horse serum, such as antitoxins, antibodies for bacterial toxins, tetanus, diphtheria, or botulism, and even anti snake venom is produced from the horse serum. So the purpose is to neutralize the toxins or venom to prevent harm to the host. Okay, monoclonal antibodies are. Antibodies made from a single clone of these cells, and it is directed against a particular epitope of an antigen. So it is used to treat cancer, autoimmune disease, and other disorders. And some of these monoclonal antibodies, yung, NX, yung sinabi ko kanina, hybridoma, ang ibig sabihin is actually, um, you get it from mouse, di ba? From the mouse myeloma. So if we combine it with the B lymphocytes, so it's the mouse monoclonal antibodies. Usually, um, the prefix is OMAB. And then if the prefix is CIMAB, it is chimeric. Okay? Kasi if the prefix is human, ibig sabihin, it came from human, the antibodies are purely human, it is UMAB. But it is hu humanized, meaning to say, majority of the structures are human, but there are some component from mouse that is zumab. Pero a combination of mouse and, and, and human, that's chimeric. So the prefix is simab. Okay? So these are, these are our code, no? Para malaman natin na 
uh, what's the what's the origin of that monoclonal antibodies so the benefit of passive immunization is that it it provides uh, immunity immediate immunity you don't have to wait so in a person who received a puncture wound potentially con uh, containing soil with with uh, tetanus spores okay we need to have tetanus vaccine uh, you need to have anti tetanus not tetanus vaccination okay kasi pag tetanus vaccination antigen yung binigay mo it will take some time before you produce but kapag binigay mo agad ng anti tetanus there is an immediate immunity and it can be used as immunosuppressive therapy in selected situations so for example we give rogam to prevent RHHDN, okay? RH hemolytic disease of newborn. Limitation of passive immunization is that it is short-lived. So short-lived because the half-life of IgG is just 33 days. And it can also induce hypersensitivity, lalo na if you're using animal sera, such as the horse serum. So there could be a type 1 or type 2. And lastly, we have the adoptive immunity. So adoptive immunity, as like what I told you, it is related to transplantation. So it is a transfer of cells of the immune system. It is performed to increase cell-mediated immunity. So for example, it is being used for the treatment of cancer patients with tumor infiltrating lymphocytes activated in vitro or Transplantation of hematopoietic stem cells in patients with immunodeficiency diseases. Okay, so I know that my lecture is not complete. So that's why I'm encouraging you to read the book. 